Hello everyone, it's Nicole Steele of the Joyful Stamper here to stamp with you guys today. How are you? I'm just refreshing my screen. Let's see, there we go. Okay. All right. It's been a very, very good day. I hope you guys are having a nice Tuesday. UPS guy came twice, FedEx guy came once, and I had a fun stamping class at the library this morning. So it's been a really good Tuesday. Tuesdays are usually pretty good. Yeah, Tuesdays are usually a good day. So if you are watching this replay or you are joining me live, I just want to say hello and welcome. I'm so glad that you've decided to spend some time with me stamping. Yay! I'm Nicole Steele, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, and I am the owner of The Joyful Stamper. That's my website, and I love stamping. I don't know else how to explain it. I love stamping. So lots and lots going on in the Stampin' Up! world, and I'm just, I'm super excited about all of it. So celebrations going on, and that's Stampin' Up!'s biggest promotion of the year, spend $50 or $100 and you can pick free items from the brochure. Well, that's part of the reason why the UPS guy came to my house today because he was delivering the new second release celebration items. So these are the two cards that we're going to make today, the Easter cards. But first I want to show you what the UPS guy brought me. So especially with paper, it's always nice to see it not in the catalog. But this celebration item is called Flowering Foils. And this is a level one celebration item. And it's got foils of, looks like rose gold. I don't have my brochure with me to see it. But look how stunning that is. You get three sheets of each of these patterns. So that's the first pattern. And the back sides are blank. So these are single sided. 12 by 12 inch sheets of designer series paper, but lots of foiling going on. And I'm thinking I can color these with sponge daubers and ink pads with my stamp and blends. Um, I might, I don't know if water coloring would work because you might warp the paper, but hey, you know what? You got three sheets here that are large. It's worth experimenting. So, and these just came a half hour ago. So I haven't even had time to make anything with them yet. This is the second pattern in the flowering foils pack. Look how shiny that is. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to start playing with this. This, I think this has to be my favorite pattern in that pack. I love all these tiny little flowers. Oh my gosh, so gorgeous. Isn't this pretty? And then this is the last pattern in the Flowering Foils pack. This you could color too. This would be fun with Stampin' Blends. And because of this repetitive pattern, I'm thinking that you could get grab some Stampin' Blends and sit in front of the TV with your favorite show and just repetitively color it, and that would be really relaxing. There's some, Is there something on Tuesday nights? No. No. Monday nights, we watch Brain Games. Wednesday nights, we watch Survivor, so maybe during Survivor, I'll be coloring a sheet of this stuff with my blends. Then the other second release celebration we had that was a favorite of mine is this embossed vellum. Look at those beautiful spring colors. We have pool party. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's pool party and pear pizzazz. And I think that's purple posy. Let me see. It'll tell me on here. Pool party, purple posy. Oh, soft sea foam. Okay. That's what it is. This is soft sea foam, but look at the pattern on that and it's textured. So when you run your hand over it, you can actually feel it. This is absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to play with this. Oh, why did he have to come just a half hour ago, right? And drop this big box of goodies off. Oh, so that's, that's the vellum. That's the celebration item. Then I got all the free stamp sets. So we have Rise and Shine, which if you're a coffee or tea drinker or like hot cocoa. This is a really cute set. And these are called reversibles, which means you can stamp with both the front and the back of the stamp. So you can make it go either way. Then we have well-dressed, which is a nice manly set. And this one is red, red rubber. 
See, look at that. So new. I haven't even had time to put these, um, melt these up yet. Okay. Tags and bloom. This is super, super pretty. Super pretty. And it coordinates with the two lovely punches that are in the mini catalog. And I believe lovely is what they're called. So <laughs> I'm not just using that word. They actually are called that. This one's pretty. I like the fonts. Love the fonts on this one. And I could see using this just for you for so many different projects because it covers everything, right? It covers everything. All right. Hi, Mike. How you doing? And then there's this set here, the little ladybug, which this one, yeah, I mean, you got to put in a $300 order to get this one for free. And there are dyes that coordinate with this, but look how stinking cute this is. The ladybug and that giant flower and all these different things. Oh my gosh, look at those little ladybugs. That is so adorable. And this set is a red rubber set too. I like stamping with red rubber. I think the images come out crisper and cleaner and I just, I don't know, I just like the feel of it. So, oh my gosh, lots of goodies, lots of goodies today. UPS guy was good to me. I mean, he had something else in my UPS box too, but it's a little sneak peek. It's called the Ornate Garden Suite and it's a sneak peek from the annual catalog that's coming up this, I want to say June. Um, and demonstrators are allowed to get it now, but it's going to be available to customers in April, the ornate garden suite. And that arrived too. And I'm going to go live this week, but I want to die cut everything and cut the paper down so you can get a really, really good look at it. So, um, so yeah, I'm not ready to show that yet, but it's going to be this week and it is gorgeous, especially the dyes. Oh, wow. The dyes are pretty. Yeah. So today we're going to make two Easter cards. And both of them use the set Hold On To Hope and Itty Bitty Greetings. So this is Hold On To Hope. I'm going to use the cross from that and I'm going to use this spray right there. And I'm going to use Easter Blessings from Itty Bitty Greetings. This actually has a second box of other greetings that go with it. There's 32 total and they cover everything. And I've been wanting to use Easter Blessings and so now I have an occasion to do that. So I'm going to do that. So let us get started with stamping. So which card to make first? I think we'll do this one first because those are the pieces I have sitting up front. Oh, before we get started with the stamping though, last week's winner for sharing my video was Joanne McClay. So Joanne, you're winning the sold out kerchief card kit. So congratulations. I will get this to you. And thank you for everyone that shared my video. I really appreciate you helping me and my little business here on the internet. So this week's prize for sharing the video is going to be the well-dressed celebration stamp set. So share the video and make sure you type shared in the comments because Facebook doesn't always let me see who shared it. That way, if you type it in the comments, I definitely see it. I can put your name into the drawing. Next Tuesday, I'll pick a winner, and the winner will get this well-dressed celebration stamp set. So you can make some Father's Day cards with it. You can make some graduation cards for some boys in your life, men in your life, okay? So this is the prize for sharing this video for next week. Thank you. All right. Let's get started. Pull out my supplies here. And that's my cheat sheet, which I don't need. All right, so we're starting with a piece of four and a quarter by 11 inches of very vanilla cardstock, and I scored it down the middle at five and a half inches. Now, I'm using the Shimmer Detailed Laser Cut Specialty Paper. This is found in the annual, in Stampin' Up's annual catalog, the big book. And it's super delicate, very delicate. In fact, when you get it, it comes with tissue paper in between each sheet because of its delicacy, because it's lace. See how that's lace? You get three of this full 12 by 12 sheet, and then you also get three sheets of um, ones that are cut apart. Let me pull those ones out. I work in a very, very tiny area here. And let's see, they're all sticking together. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I've got shimmer lace paper everywhere. I had this so nice and neatly organized too. Yeah, all my sheets are cut up. So 
this is what the cut apart one looks like. Let me get them separated. Okay, and you can see I've, I've cut out part of this already, but you get a little bird there, some flowers, lots of good pieces to make things. Here's some border pieces. And it's very vanilla shimmer on one side, and it's white on the other side. So, all right, we are gonna start with this, and I'm gonna fold it, and I'm gonna show you how I glued this background to this card. The easiest way that I found to do it was to just take a piece of that, um, I didn't use the cut aparts, I used the full size of lace. Let me grab a sheet, there we go. So you can see from my previous card how I cut part of that away. I'm gonna use a different portion of this now. And what you do is just lay it right over top of your card base like this. And let it hang over. Okay, we wanna deal gently with this paper because of its laciness. So just let it hang over and you can move this shimmer paper around until you get it where you want it because it does have different patterns throughout it. So let's get my card here just right. I'm gonna grab my paper snips and I'm also gonna grab a bottle of fine tip glue because there's a lot of small spaces on this and we want to use the fine tip glue to make sure we get it all on there. So I'm gonna do, go down in the corner here just like this. There we go. And then I'm gonna take paper snips and I'm going to cut around it. Now I'm not going to cut exactly up to the card because I want to give myself some wiggle room here. So I'm going to start about right here and I'm just going to start carefully snipping the pieces away and work my way around. Come down here. There we go. And some of them will be attached and some will not. So you're just gonna kinda look whenever you cut. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, yeah, this is a fussier project, it sure is. There's no denying it. This is not a quick and easy project. However, I think it's worth making because it's just, it's so pretty. So now we have our piece cut out like that. So see, we've got lots of places to move it around. And now I'm gonna use fine tip glue to glue it down. There we go. My cap was stuck on there a little bit. I had a class at the library this morning and we used it, um, this fine tip glue, to glue some of our pieces down. And now I'm just gonna apply, apply glue to the back of this. And, and I'm going to remember that not all of this is actually gonna fit on the card. So I'm staying more towards the center. And what I'll do is once I lay this down, I can see where it's loose still on my card and I'll apply more glue. But right now, I just wanna get, get it stuck down so I can work with it. So, and you don't have to worry about it being straight on your card because things are going all over the place on this. There's a lot of crazy happening on this with all the flowers and the leaves. So there we go, we got it pressed down. And then I just gently lift up the pieces so I could see that definitely needs some more glue there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. Today was an absolutely perfect day for a class here in Pittsburgh, Swickley, because it was raining and it just felt so nice to be in the library Stamping with other women who were happy to be there too. And I hope they had a good time because I really had a good time myself. And the cards we made were so bright and so cheerful. And I just love being there. I put all the tutorial, I wrote up a tutorial for the cards that I made in the monthly class. And because I've had requests actually for them, I know not everybody lives near me. So what I did is I put them up, typed them up in a tutorial, put some pictures up in there, and the cost of my classes are $15. So if you, if all you do is just, just place a $15 order in my online store, shop with Nicole.stampin' up, 
www.thelovelyfriendship.net and I will send you that tutorial via email. And you can make them yourself right in your home. So you can wear your pajamas. You don't even have to get dressed. You don't have to come out in the rain like we all did this morning to go to the library. Oh, look at that. I got a little bit of ink on there. It's from my class this morning, but oh well. Okay, so there you go. I glue that all down. And I'm going to put my cap back on that glue. And I'm going to let it dry for a little bit, and then I'll trim off the excess. So while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and emboss my cross. And I'm going to use a, a piece of Rich Razzleberry cardstock to do that. So I've got it here. And we're going to use a Versamark ink pad. Okay, so that's a rich Razzleberry piece of cardstock, and I don't even need to use my embossing buddy for it because we're going to trim around this cross. So I'm using Versamark, ink up this cross. It's from Hold On To Hope, which is in the annual catalog. I'm going to stamp it on there. There we go. Can't really see it because Versamark is clear. And now I'm going to put some gold stamp and emboss powder on there. And we're going to make our gold cross shiny to match the shimmer of that paper. There we go. And now I'm going to turn on oh, the heat gun. Actually, I'm going to stamp the greeting too. And that way I just have to turn the heat gun on once. Now, this shimmer embossed paper has extra room in between the cut aparts. So there's spaces in between. When you cut the pieces out um, of one of the larger sheets, let me show you here. You can see there's extra room there. So what I did is I took some of that extra and that's what I'm using to stamp my Easter blessings greeting. Now this I will use my embossing buddy on because the greeting is so tiny. I wanna make sure that I'm stamping it, uh, that the powder's going only where I want it to go. And I'm going to ink up Easter blessings in Versamark ink. And I'm gonna stamp it on this piece of paper just like that and lift it up and then I'm also going to put gold embossing powder on that give it a little flick to get off the extra all right and now we're going to heat emboss this so I'm going to turn on the heat gun oh and you know what it would help if I plugged it in I unplugged it because I didn't want my little dog while I was gone to accidentally bump my heat gun. Oh, could you imagine? This thing gets so hot. If Lily would have bumped it and it would have been running while I was gone, my house would have caught on fire. So I unplugged it for safety's sake. You can burn yourself on this heat tool, that's for sure. Do you see the powder melting? Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, there's the cross. And now, let's see if I can do this without burning my fingers. Easter blessing. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, and now we're gonna cut this cross out. There is a set of dies that go with this stamp set with Hold On To Hope. So it will die cut this cross out for you. And actually, it will also die cut a fancy cross too, you know, with, um, you know, really intricate die work, but I don't have it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and I'm going to try and trim it, not all the way up to the gold embossing powder, because I'm going to leave some of that rich razzleberry showing through. So there we go. And then I want to trim up my greeting a little bit too. And I flagged it. So let's see, let's give it a little trim. I love these little itty bitty greetings. Sometimes I look through my stamp sets and I'm like, ah, I can't really find what I need, what I want to say. And itty bitty greetings always has it. They're straight, simple, and to the point. Okay. Flag those ends just like that. So now we have our embossing done. And now I'm gonna take a piece of vellum 
and I'm going to take another piece of that shimmer white detailed laser cut paper and this is from one of the cut apart sheets I showed you and all I did was take my scissors and I cut around it and then I put this in my trimmer and I trimmed and straightened the edges okay I think this is dry now so I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to go ahead and trim around this card base and get rid of this extra laciness here okay All right. Mm, that's a fairly big flower I'm cutting off there. Yep, look at that. I still have to do the top. I didn't see that. The fold was hiding it. Okay. And then I'll check it again to make sure all my pieces are glued onto there. Okay. All right. I don't know. Do you like to make fussy cards? That one needs glued down. Some people like really quick and simple cards. Sometimes I like that. And other times I like to take a little more, I don't know, time with my card. And that's what I did with this one. I was sitting down and I found this shimmer paper that I hadn't played with in a while. And I thought, I want to make an Easter card. Okay, and I see a little bit hanging off there, but I will cut that off in a minute. So now what I'm going to do is adhere this. And snail will work for this just fine. And you won't be able to see it because it's going to get covered by the cross. So I'm going to put a strip right down the middle, just like that. And I'm going to put this down the middle of my card. And it's going to just draw a little bit of attention to the cross. And now this shimmer detailed piece is going to go right on the top there. I did not use dimensionals for that actually. I just used my snail. It was out. It was handy and it's going to do the job. So there we go. And I'll put that right, right there just like that. More towards the top. I want it to go towards the top because I still want this bottom part of the vellum to show and my greeting's going to go down there. Now what I need to do, here's a really good trick. So if you have stamp and blends markers and these are the these are our alcohol ink markers and you have a spool of ribbon. This happens to be gold metallic edge ribbon and it has it's very vanilla satin. We have silver metallic edge ribbon also and that would be in whisper white. Either one of those, you can color with our Stampin' Blends. So I'm gonna take a piece, and this is gonna get folded underneath my cross, just like that. So, I'm gonna trim off just a little bit like that. I only need a small piece, I'm not tying it in a bow. And make sure you have scratch paper down for this. I am going to color it with a dark Blackberry Bliss Stampin' Blends. You can use any color you want. This is a really, really great way. I'm using the brush tip of that stamp and Blend marker and I'm just lightly going across it like that. You don't need to apply heavy pressure. You don't need to go over and over it again. But this is a really great way to buy one spool of ribbon and get it in many colors. And your stamp and Blends can be used for so much more than just coloring ribbon. So you'll have them on hand to color like that flowering foils paper I showed you from the celebration catalog. And I'm gonna set that aside to dry for a little bit, but look how pretty that is. That was very vanilla and now it's dark blackberry bliss. I'm gonna put dimensionals on the back of that. Let's see if I can find any. Sometimes when I've had my classes, things get in a little bit of disarray around here because I take all my supplies with me. And then I'm gonna put a couple little ones on either side of the cross like that. Okay, and this should be good now. I'm just gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna tuck it down like that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of snail down there to hold it. Fold it in half and just put it down. We don't want that stray paper there. Then I'm going to take the liner tape off of my cross. 
So next month, I'm going to a Stampin' Up! event in Akron, Ohio. That's the one closest to me, and I'm excited. It's not a big one like I went to in Las Vegas, but it's going to be a smaller, shorter one, three hours long, and I'm really excited about it. I like meeting with other Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this because those are a little bit too long. Okay. And while I'm at it, I'll cut off that extra piece that I had to glue down. Okay. There we go. This is looking really good. It's amazing. I did not lose this greeting. Woohoo! Okay. Let's put some little Stampin' Dimensionals on it. Oh, I feel like I'm dragging today. I don't know. I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. So by the time I hit this part of the day, I've been up for almost 12 hours. And I go go and go. <laughs> and I got to stay awake for Jeopardy at 7 o'clock. So I got a long way to go. So I put mini dimensionals on that and I'm just sticking it right at the bottom there and I'm going to let a little bit of that vellum show through. So there we go. Does that look like my original? Am I forgetting anything? Nope. That looks like it. So there you go. Isn't that look so pretty with that shimmer paper? And what I like about doing it this way is when I you put it on the very vanilla card base, it really lets the shimmer stand out because of the monochromatic color. And there's just so much of it going it on. I mean, we used it for the background, used it for this frame, used it for the greeting. And when you do the cross in this ribbon, in that Blackberry Bliss and Rich Razzleberry, it really makes it pop. And then the gold embossing powder just makes it so elegant. So I, I'm really happy with this. So that that's card Easter card number one. Okay, now Easter card number two. I really like this one. I really, really like this one. Let me clean up my space here a little bit. We do not need the Stampin' Blends for this one because there's no ribbon on it. But I do need to get my little card kit out here. Okay. All right. Um, do we need Versamark? Yes, we do. We need Versamark because we're going to heat emboss that cross again. Okay, so this one I am starting off. Oh, hi Jane. Yes, I know the shimmer paper is really pretty, isn't it? And I've neglected it for so long. I've had it for a while and I just, I rediscovered it in my stash. Forgot I had it. But that's kind of fun when you rediscover what you have. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of Rich Razzleberry cardstock. And I scored it down the middle at five, or at four and a quarter inches. And I'm going to fold this in half. And we are going to use a Rich Razzleberry ink pad to stamp this image from Hold On to Hope all over our background here. And we can just stick to the outside because the middle is going to get covered by all of our card elements here. Making backgrounds is one of my favorite things to do. Oftentimes I'll look at a card and I'll think, oh, it looks a little naked. I don't like naked cards. What can I do? And I stamp a background. I don't know. You know how everybody has their little crafting go-to trick that they seem to do? Some people like to put ribbons and bows on their card. I like to stamp backgrounds. Okay, so there's our background. And that was easy enough to do. And I love the richness of that rich razzleberry color. Okay, so we have that. And you know what? While I have the rich razzleberry pad out, I'm going to stamp the Easter Blessings greeting. And I'm going to do it on a piece of petal pink cardstock. And again, I'm going to use rich razzleberry ink. And it's a skinny strip. And I made a project sheet, so I'm going to have all the measurements up on my um, blog and in the description to this video. So Easter Blessings, Rich Razzleberry ink, pressing down lightly because it's a tiny stamp. There we go. You don't want to rock your stamp because when you do, then you get smushy, smushy greetings like that. So no rocking, no rocking. And I'm going to trim this down when I add it to my card because otherwise I'm afraid I'm going to lose it in the mess that I've got going on here. So, okay. Next up, these are all my pieces here. This is another piece that I cut from the Shimmer detailed paper. 
And again, I just trimmed around it with my scissors and I'm gonna cut it right, or just lay it right on. And I'm gonna use the fine tip glue to adhere this piece too. But I'm gonna do it over vellum. So I have that vellum layer that I'm gonna put down and I'm gonna use snail adhesive for this because once again, the snail is going to get covered by everything that I put on my card. So it'll be perfectly fine to use it. I just wanna make sure there's no fuzzies underneath it. So that's going in the middle of my card, just like that. And this I'm going to put on with the fine tip glue. And I'm just gonna put, I think the ends in this case are probably where you really want to get that glue because you don't want it coming up. So just hold the piece in the middle so you don't get glue on your fingers, run it along the edge, and you can put a couple dots here in the middle and at either end there just to hold it. And then I'm gonna lay it down right on my card base like that. And apply a little bit of pressure so that it gives it time to adhere. There we go. Put the cap back on so it doesn't dry out. You know what I was saying today at my class, how I will know that I need reading glasses is when I can no longer get this cap into that tiny little needle of that fine tip glue pen. <laughs> so. When I can't do that anymore, then I know it's time to get some glasses. Now this oval, I used the layering oval dies to cut this oval from a piece of vellum. And I'm gonna use snail to adhere that down too. It would help if I took the cap off of it. There we go. And the nice thing about vellum is you actually don't need very much adhesive to get it to stick. Okay, got that down there. And now I'm actually, I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other card. I'm gonna stamp this cross in Versamark ink. And put heat, or put gold embossing powder on it. And then I'm going to cut it out. So, sprinkle some on. Don't need the embossing buddy because of the fact that I'm cutting it out. So if embossing powder gets anywhere it shouldn't be, it's gonna get trimmed away anyways. So, no worries. All right, turning the heat gun on. And let's watch it melt. There we go. All right, and now I'm gonna trim it. Now there's a couple pieces I need to um, to trim here. Where's the flowers? There. I used this on my card from last week. This is a piece of the Parisian Blossoms designer series paper. And if you watched my video from last week, you would have seen that I cut some of the flowers out of that paper to add to my Eiffel Tower image. and. It was so pretty, I decided I'm gonna do it again for this Easter card. So I'm gonna cut out some flowers and I'm gonna add them to this cross here. And honestly, I don't know what kind of flowers those are. I'm not a gardener. I know, I feel like I should be. I was defective in the, the gardening gene or deficient in it, I don't know. But whatever the case, I can't grow anything, nothing. So I gave up a long time ago. My husband, however, seems to have a green thumb, but he's so busy working that he basically just cuts the grass. So I don't know. Maybe I should hire a gardener, but I'm not that kind of person and I don't live in that kind of house. All right, so dimensionals to put that on. Now we're gonna cut out some flowers. And I find fussy cutting so relaxing. And it's really not hard to do. Let's trim that, oh, there's a little piece there. There we go. Let's cut that one out. I like the colors in this paper. So petal pink and rich razzleberry is what I went with for this one. I think they go really good together. 
There's a little bit of pool party in this, but not much. It's more or less on the background. Let's cut out this one here on the end. And, you know, I'm going to be really sad when this paper retires. As a demonstrator, when stuff retires, I don't use it anymore. But that doesn't mean you can't. It's still good. You just can't buy it anymore. But you can still use it. And you know what? I actually use retired stuff too. It's still good. It's still pretty. It's still fun. Okay. Cut out this other flower. I probably should have done that little one because I have to cut around the petal. But you know what? We'll tuck this one underneath the cross partly so that you won't see that part of that petal is missing. And that's the great thing about using stamp and dimensionals is it lifts the elements on your card so that you can tuck things underneath and hide things, you know, like where the flower isn't all the way. So I'm going to add some stamp and dimensionals to the back of these flowers just like that. Peel the paper away. If you could see how small of a space I stamp in, you would be surprised. All right, now I want to make sure that I get these parts hidden. So we'll do that. Um, that's a little big for up there, don't you think? So maybe I will put this one up there and tuck that one like that. I don't know. Hmm. Because that flower is good, just like that. How do I want to do this? Oh, I see a little piece right there that I don't want. Okay. Um, Do I want that one to be tucked like that? I feel like that sticks up too much up top. So, let's see. Hmm. Maybe I'm just going to leave it like that. I think so. We'll just leave it like that. And then I'm going to use this Easter Blessings. This is going to go down on the bottom. And I'm going to trim it. I don't want it quite that long. So let's trim it like that. And this is going to get glued flush with the card. So no dimensionals for this one. Stray piece there. And I'm going to glue that right there. And I felt like it still needed a little bit more down there. So I'm going to use some metallic pearls. And the package comes with both silver and gold pearls. And I think my paper piercer will be easier to work with. And I'm going to put five of them underneath. And I'm going to start in the middle. I find it easier to work from the middle than out to the left and right. So five of them total. And it really is easier when you use a take your pick tool or a piercer, something with a sharp end like that, so that you can have control because my fingers are too big to pick up these little pearls. So there we go. And where's the other card? There it is. So those are the two cards that we made today. And there's the original those out. So look at that. There I go. I got four Easter cards now that I can mail out. So yay. So thank you for joining me today, whether you're watching live or the replay. And this is Nicole Steele, the Joyful Stamper. I would so appreciate if you would share my video, um, subscribe to it if you're watching on YouTube and make sure you hit that bell so that you get notified when I post a video. And this is the host code for the March ordering special. If you use this code, and you order $15 minimum from my online store, I will send you the tutorial bundle for my live local in-class, um, or my live local in-person class that I have each month. So all four projects we make will be included in that tutorial bundle. So thank you again for joining me today. I hope you like the projects, and I will see you next Tuesday at two o'clock Eastern time. All right, thanks guys, bye.